You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU heads to Starkville Saturday morning, 11 a.m. kickoff. Brian Kelly, when he met with reporters, talked about the opportunity here to start SEC play on the road against the Bulldogs. Certainly, um, you know, this is what gets everybody's attention. And not only do we play Mississippi State, but we play on the road. And playing on the road in the SEC is a great challenge. Playing an SEC opponent obviously doubles that. Then you've got to deal with all of the things that go with travel, playing at 11 a.m., cowbells, all mm. of those things. But you do it first and foremost, starting with great preparation this week. And then, you know, your performance. If you play really well, you don't have to deal with all those distractions like any other opponent. One of the things that he mentioned there, you know, 11 a.m., he, he talked about road, cowbells, 11 a.m. start. Several times during Brian Kelly's press conference, he mentioned the 11 a.m. kickoff. And uh, so I, I asked him, Considering how it went a year ago for LSU in those 11 a.m. starts, if you remember, LSU played Tennessee at 11 a.m. That's one we would all like to forget. And then they played Arkansas in Fayetteville at 11 a.m. And that was a game where, I mean, Arkansas was so overmatched without K.J. Jefferson. Malik Hornsby started at quarterback, and they were just wholly unable to move the ball and Harold Perkins dominated that game, but still, it was a far too close for comfort game for the status LSU was at coming off the Alabama win, going on the road against Arkansas without their starting quarterback. So given that, and, and the fact that Brian Kelly is so detail-oriented, I asked him, were they planning on doing anything differently you know, this week or this year with, with an 11 a.m. kickoff? Not that we would do anything differently, but we do things in our preparation that matches uh, an early start. You know, for example, in our practice schedule, we'll do some things that accelerate, you know, our team articulation. In other words, we're not going to do individual and work our way into group and then get to team. We'll go to team right away. you got to turn it on immediately. We'll do some things relative to getting our senses awakened earlier on game day. You know, we're going to start with our team meal at around 7.20 in the morning. We're going to have an hour bus ride. So, you know, we'll have to handle all of those things a little bit differently than a normal routine. You know, we have a shakeout during a night game, you know. So this is going to be a, a totally different schedule than that they've been presented with. We'll use some of the things we did last year. And I think that that sets them up for a little bit more of um, a, an understanding of what that day is going to look like. The shakeout, what he talked about, if you don't remember, when LSU plays a night game, Brian Kelly doesn't like for his team to be pent up in their hotel room all day, so they actually go to the stadium and like they walk around and run around just to like get some nervous energy out, and then they go back to the hotel again. So it's it's a little bit of a uh, of a different type of schedule when you got to be up and at it early. Um, there is this narrative that LSU doesn't play well at 11 a.m. I actually got a message. Uh, God, I wish I could I could find this quickly. I'd read it for you, but I got a message from from a Mississippi State fan who essentially was bemoaning the fact that this game. Uh, here it is. I found it. Okay, um, bemoaning the fact that this game was at 11 a.m. Basically saying that from State's perspective, it's better for them to have a night game. Uh, he he wrote to me on Twitter. Last time this game was played at night in Stark Vegas, Mississippi State was a 10-point underdog and won 37 to 7. SEC laws to SEC laws, I don't to protect their prima donna schools by scheduling at 11 o'clock. <laughs> tell tell an LSU fan that the SEC is doing LSU a scheduling favor. Try to have that conversation with any LSU fan. Now, I am on the complete opposite side of that because I do believe your body clock, all of that schedule and familiarity matters. Like, I do afternoon radio, okay? And whatever you do professionally, this might make sense. When I'm on air, as soon as the microphone opens, I got to be ready to roll. Full energy, peak energy. When you do morning radio... It's a completely different dynamic because if you start at 6 a.m., I mean, I did morning radio at one point. We started at 5. My first news report was at 5.30, which means 
When I'm doing that news report, it can't. I can't have just rolled out of bed 10 minutes earlier. It's got to sound like the middle of the day for me. So like you're up earlier. It's just it's a totally different thing. Now the same is true for Mississippi State, but they get to sleep in their own beds, and there's a lot more familiarity there. So, no, I I do not subscribe to the belief that the 11 a.m. start is a benefit for for LSU. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, the great Todd Polites, I did find this on Twitter, who, of course, is a, the, the stat guru at LSU. That's not his official title. But dating back to 1983, he found every morning kickoff uh, for LSU. And until 2022, last year, when LSU went Went one and one. Of course, they lost Tennessee and then beat uh, Arkansas. Here in succession is their previous morning starts. In 2021, they played that game against Florida in Tiger Stadium, where Ty Davis Price ran for 300 yards. LSU won that one, 49-42. They beat Utah State in 2019. That was an 11 a.m. kickoff. They beat Arkansas in 2017. That was an 11 a.m. kickoff. They beat Kentucky in 2011. That was the Tyron Matthew. Stripping Maxwell Smart uh, or Maxwell Smith. Maxwell Smith. Maxwell Smart is from Get Smart. Maxwell Smith. That was a, that's Alan Risher's fault. I blame him because he he basically called him Maxwell Smart the whole the whole season. Anyway, when they beat Kentucky in 2011, the uh, 2008 um, game against uh, Appalachian State. Um, these and I guess these were all um, uh, I guess these were all home games by the way. But um, in, in any event. LSU has had a lot of success in 11 a.m. games, largely because when you are playing at 11 a.m., it's because you're playing, generally speaking, not always, it's because you're playing a bad opponent. You're normally playing that that JP special, the the 11 a.m. SEC network game, that that old window. But from time to time, you end up on on ESPN in a pretty premium matchup at 11 a.m. So we'll see if um, if the Tigers can uh, can get up and get rolling in this game early. The thing that LSU probably has going for it more so than the kickoff time or anything like that, I I think it's the fact that you're going against a Zach Arnett coach team. And that's going to sound pretty harsh, but I don't have a ton of confidence in Zach Arnett's ability to win sustainably and long-term at Mississippi State. In hindsight, we may come back and I may be dead wrong. But I picked Mississippi State last in the West this year, and I'm not one of those people that every year just default, by default picks Mississippi State last. I know Mississippi State people get very upset about that because they, they almost never finish last, but they get picked last every year. Well, they had back-to-back really good coaches there. I mean, the the longevity of Dan Mullen and Mike Leach back-to-back made them a, a good middle-tier SEC program, regardless of what the perception of Mississippi State was. But I I think two things. Number one, I don't know that any coach had done more with less than Mike Leach. Lubbock, Texas, Pullman, Washington, Starkville, Mississippi, and he won at all of those places. Fewer resources, remote locations, so many things logistically against you, and he won at all three. So you just re- forget the fact alone, the tragedy of the situation. Just not having Mike Leach is a massive disadvantage to go from Mike Leach to Zach Arnett, a rookie head coach. The other part of that is this is a this is a learn on the job situation for Zach Arnett, who to begin with is not very impressive. And I don't mean to, for that to be a dig on the man. He may be a great human. I had a chance to sit down with him at SEC Media Days, and I was very grateful for the time. But usually, head coaches at this level are these sort of like dominant personality alpha males. It's like it's why you have the confidence in yourself to be a major college football head coach. He doesn't give that vibe. And I'm not saying like you have to be a preacher like Hugh Freeze where you have this 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 big personality like that that is magnetic, you know, almost like a an evangelist. Like but you got to be able to be engaging to people. And I just don't see that with Arnett and by his own admission, he talked like this is a long cut this is like more than a minute, which is hard to imagine Zach Arnett answering a question for more than a minute. But this is a long cut about him explaining and taking ownership of mismanaging game situations through the first two weeks. There was a lot of situational stuff that came up in that game. Third and three, third and four, right? Kind of fringe areas. Is that a punt? Is that a go for it? Attempt a long field goal. So there's situations like that. You know, I've decided to go for it 
once in each game down in, I think I've been fourth and goal at the four both times. We haven't got either one. So hindsight being 2020, you can line up and you kick a field goal. You also like your odds of, of defending a long field with your defense, right? And so, but there's that's, that's six points that I prevented uh, simply because I made a decision to go for it, right? And so, and those situations are going to continue to come up. I'm, I referenced that 18, 19 play drive they had where then Sean forces a fumble. We scoop it, return it about, I don't know, 25, 30 yards. So we get it out to probably out past the 35. And I instructed the offense, hey, let's play this a little conservative here. Let's try to eat some clock up because we've got a defense who needs to catch their wind on the sideline, right? If you go out, you go super aggressive. Let's just say you a couple incomplete passes. The clock, You don't run any time off the clock. You're potentially having to punt and go right back out. Now, on the flip side, right, if I, had, if I could do that all over again, I would have told us to be super aggressive. you got a chance to firmly take all the momentum in that game, right? You've just caused a big play to prevent a score. Man, if you can go be super aggressive and score a touchdown there, make that, I think, 21 nothing. it would have been at that point. Yeah, your defense has to go back out really tired, but it's worth the trade-off of the momentum and the three scores. Do you think Mike Leach ever in his career said, you know what, I'm not going to be aggressive here. I'm going to sit on it and run some clock. That's what I'm going to do. Let my defense catch some wind. Look, Will Rogers, who is thrown for 11,000 yards in his career in the air raid. If you're LSU, what's the thing that you're really concerned about right now? You're secondary. State ain't running the air raid. This last weekend against Arizona, the game went to overtime. Will Rogers was 13 of 17 for 162 yards. An overtime game at home. And Will Rogers threw the ball 17 times. What in the name of Les Miles is going on in Starkville? This is a good draw for LSU at the right time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.